everyone, I'm Vincent Racaniello, and this is Virus Watch, the weekly video on what is happening in the amazing world of viruses. Today, we're going to explore the architecture of Zika virus. Zika virus is a flavivirus, a family of viruses that also includes yellow fever virus, dengue virus, and West Nile virus. The name Flavus means yellow in Latin. This virus family was given this name because of the color of the skin caused by yellow fever virus infection. I like to think of viruses as efficient gene delivery machines. Their genetic information, or genome, is DNA or RNA, which is wrapped in a protective coat that protects it as it travels from cell to cell and host to host. When a virus infects a cell, the nucleic acid enters and reprograms the cell to make new virus particles. Here's a model of my favorite virus, poliovirus. You can see that the shell is spherical, it's made of protein, and protects the RNA that's inside. Flaviviruses are similar, except that the protein shell is wrapped in a membrane. Let's take a look at how Zika virus is built. The Zika virus genome is a strand of RNA, shown here in green. The RNA is wrapped in a protective shell called a capsid that's shown by the blue proteins in the cartoon. A membrane surrounds the capsid, and two viral proteins are inserted into the membrane. They're called E, the brown protein, and M, the smaller blue protein. E stands for envelope, another name for the viral membrane, and M stands for membrane in which most of that protein is embedded. You can see the parts of E and M that are in the membrane, the transmembrane domains, and the parts that are exposed on the surface of the virus particle. When flaviviruses infect a cell, the E protein on virus particles attaches to a protein on the cell surface. We'll take a look at that step later. Here is our complete Zika virus with all the components labeled, the viral RNA, the capsid, and the E and M proteins in the membrane. Recently, a group at Purdue University determined the high-resolution structure of the Zika virus particle. Having a high-resolution structure means that we can see exactly where every atom is located in three-dimensional space. So far, we've been looking at a cartoon of the Zika virus particle in two dimensions. Now I'll show you a three-dimensional view so that you can see the beautiful architecture of a virus particle. We'll start by focusing on the basic subunit of the Zika virus particle, which consists of 2E and 2M proteins. We call this a dimer of E and M. Here is one EM dimer. But this is still a cartoon. Here is what the EM dimer actually looks like. What you're seeing is a ribbon diagram of both proteins, E in brown, M in blue. This view shows what we call the backbone of the amino acids that make up the protein. The side chains are removed for clarity. Now let's add in all the atoms of the protein. Now we're looking at the EM dimer, where each atom is shown as a sphere. You can see that the EM dimer looks like we drew it in the cartoon, only we have much more detail now. In the virus particle, there are 180 copies of E and 180 copies of M. Let's put those together and see what it looks like. Here's the complete Zika virus particle. The E protein is brown and the M protein is blue. This view shows only the amino acid backbone. The structure determined by the Purdue group shows only the E and M proteins. There's no viral RNA, no capsid, and no membrane. Having the three-dimensional structure of a virus particle means that we can use a computer program to move around the structure and even go inside the virus particle. There's plenty of space for us to get in because we have removed many of the atoms. Once inside, the particle is empty. The RNA is not seen in this structure. We can move around the interior and see how the virus is built, a view that few people ever see. Here's another view of the virus particle with all the atoms shown as spheres. Now you can see that the shell is complete and how it can protect the viral RNA as it travels from host to host. In this view, I've colored the E proteins red, blue, or green, depending on whether they are in groups of five, three, or two. This arrangement of viral proteins is called icosahedral symmetry. An icosahedron happens to be the best way to build a stable virus capsid with the smallest number of proteins. The characteristic of icosahedral symmetry is the repetition of protein subunits in the virus particle. When viewed at atomic resolution, virus particles are truly beautiful. But the information we obtain from such structures can also help design vaccines and antivirals and help us understand how viruses get in and out of cells. An example comes from our second paper from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which describes how an antibody binds to Zika virus. 
Antibodies are proteins that we make when we're infected with viruses, bacteria, and other foreign invaders. Antibodies bind to the virus particle and prevent it from infecting cells. They are part of our immune system that defends us against virus infections. In this study, the authors determined the structure of an antibody against Zika virus that blocks infection in cells and in mice. When Zika viruses infect cells, it first binds to a cell surface receptor protein. The virus particle is then taken into the cell in a membrane vesicle called an endosome. Then the membrane of the virus and the endosome fuse, releasing the viral RNA into the cytoplasm, where it can begin directing the synthesis of new virus particles. Antibodies against viruses, shown in red in this image, bind to virus particles and prevent them from entering cells. This is how some antibodies prevent virus infections. The antibody used in this study binds the E protein of Zika virus. Remember, E is the brown protein in this cartoon. Here is the structure of the Zika virus E protein, colored red, bound to the antibody which is colored green. The antibody is binding to the part of the E protein that causes the viral membrane to fuse with the endosome membrane during entry into the cell. This part of E protein is called the fusion peptide, and it's colored yellow in this image. Now we're looking at the E antibody complex, where the atoms are shown as spheres. This view really shows you how the antibody binds the yellow fusion peptide of the E protein. Binding of this antibody to E protein probably blocks fusion of the viral and cell membranes. What we're looking at is the structure of a single E protein bound to a single antibody. But in the Zika virus particle, the E protein is always a dimer. There are two copies next to each other. In the dimer configuration, the fusion peptide is buried, as shown in the ribbon view, and, more dramatically, in this view, with all the atoms shown as spheres. We don't understand how this antibody can bind the Zika virus particle. We know from this work how it binds a single molecule of E, but on the virus surface there are always two molecules of E next to each other, and the fusion peptide is not accessible to the antibody. How the antibody finds the fusion peptide in groups of two E proteins is somewhat of a mystery. This antibody to Zika virus might be used one day to treat infected patients, much like ZMAP, a cocktail of three antibodies, was used to treat Ebola virus infections. I've always loved to look at virus structures because they are simply beautiful. Beautiful, but deadly. That's Virus Watch for May 9th, 2016. For more in-depth discussion of all these stories and more, check out This Week in Virology at microbe.tv slash twiv. I'm Vincent Rackin-Yellow, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.